Hey, everybody, and welcome on Into the Bullpen. I am your host, Adam the Bull, and it is a happy celebration Sunday. The Browns kick off the November portion of their schedule with an easy victory over the lowly Cardinals, 27 to nothing. Coming up on today's podcast, I talk about the domination that was the Browns, my visit to the Muni lot, and what this division looks like, maybe even a peak, quick peek ahead to the matchup next week. That's all coming up on today's edition of The Bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. You're watching Adam the Bull on the Bet Rivers Network. Before I get into the game, uh, let me just say that this morning, went to the Muni lot with Mikey McNuggets and G. Bush, and uh, we had a we had a, just an unbelievable time. I must have said hello to, I don't know, 200 people this morning in the two and a half hours, maybe more than that. I don't know. I took pictures with a zillion people. We had a great time. The Muni lot was bonkers. Everybody was having fun. The weather was perfect. Everybody was behaving themselves. And it was just a great morning. And I hadn't been out at the Muni lot for, it's probably been six, seven years since I've been out there. And, you know, sometimes you forget how many people you touch, how many people you connect with. And so it was a great reminder for me and all the guys, you know, that you have a lot of fans out there. There's a lot of people that know you and care about you. And it was sometimes you you, you dwell on the haters, but that was impossible after today. So I want to say thanks to all the fans that were so kind, so nice, went around on all the buses, the vans, ate some food. It was just a perfect weather, perfect day. It was fantastic. We're going to get to the game in 15 seconds. But first, get extra value this football season with Bet River Squares. Went up to $10,000 in bonus money. Bet $10 in same-game parlays on any game with the Squares icon to earn a square. The Browns certainly earned a victory on this Sunday afternoon, dominating the Arizona Cardinals 27 to nothing. The game was never really in doubt because the Cardinals were beyond inept on the offensive side of the ball. And certainly some of that was going with a rookie who had never played a game, was drafted one pick before DTR, and the fact that they were down to their third string wide uh, running back. But the but give a lot of credit to Jim Schwartz and his defense. They were fantastic. They were relentless. The Cardinals, I, I don't think they got the ball past the Browns 45 years. Maybe the 40? I Maybe in that first drive. I can't remember where they stopped them. But I, I know they would never in the red zone. They weren't even close. It was complete domination. Uh, once, the, once the Browns scored, it was like basically game over. At, at the half, it was, it was over. I mean, without a doubt. Uh, Brown's offense took a while to get going. We'll get to that in a minute, but because when it got going, it got going nicely, but let's start with the defense An absolutely magnificent game. Everybody played well. The Browns had six sacks. I think they fit. I'm sorry. Seven. That's right. They had one more at the end, seven sacks led by Dalvin Tomlinson. The big man in the middle had two and a half sacks. Uh, Shelby Harris had one. Zadarius Smith had one, which was good to see because he hasn't been overly productive in terms of sacks. Um, so far on the season. So, so as I said, that was really good to see. And just a, a great effort all around. Miles Garrett, of course, had a sack. And Grant Delpit had a half a sack as well. Jordan Elliott. Jordan Elliott's playing real. I mean, who's not playing well in this Browns defense? Grant Delpit was fantastic. Not only did the Browns have seven sacks, they had 10 tackles for a loss. Eight passes defended and 10 quarterback hits. I mean, it was just a lights out effort. Uh, I mentioned Grant Delpit, 10 tackles in this one, a half a sack, a tackle for a loss, a quarterback hit. Uh, he was all over the place, making a lot of big plays in this game. I thought JOK played well. I meant, you know, mentioned a bunch of guys. Shelby Harris. Shelby Harris had a, had his welcome to the Browns game because he hadn't really been able to do much. He had not been much of a factor with, you know, guys like Maurice Hurst, and others doing so much. And Maurice Hurst uh, didn't – felt like he wasn't playing that much. He did have one quarterback hit, not much. He was quiet today, but Shelby Harris got his opportunity, and he had a big game. I mean, he, again, all over the place. Knocked down a pass, had a sack, another tackle for a loss. Um, uh, it, You know, on, on, the, on a running play, Juan Thornhill made some good plays. And what can you say about – and the, the, the guy I didn't mention yet, uh, 
Denzel Ward. I mean, this guy is playing out of his mind right now. Denzel Ward had one of the two interceptions. Sione Taki Taki, another guy with a good game, uh, had the other. But Denzel Ward, this inter- like he's making interceptions that are great catches. You know, a lot of times with an interception, it comes right to you, and it's an easy play. But Denzel Ward stole one uh, two weeks ago. And then this play, it was, a, it was a bad throw by Clayton Toon. He overthrew Marquise Brown, but it had a lot of juice on the throw. And, and Denzel had to make a diving catch. They got nothing going on him. Two passes defended as well. He led the team. Two of the eight passes defended. Denzel is playing at, a, at an all-pro level right now, at the very least a pro bowl level. I shouldn't say, you know, all-pro. Because I'm not carefully watching the other cornerbacks. But um, I don't know if that he's been pushed by Martin Emerson. But Denzel Ward is just playing at an incredible level right now. And at the moment, the combo of Denzel Ward and Martin Emerson Jr., that one-two punch has got to be as good as, as any in the league. They're playing great. So kudos across the board. Jim Schwartz did a, did a great job with the game plan today. They never let Arizona breathe. They kept the pressure on. You could tell in the fourth. I mean, the game obviously was well in hand, go twenty to nothing going into the fourth quarter. They tacked on another touchdown in the fourth. But you could tell, like a lot of teams, they get up big and they coast. And the Browns sat Watson, which was smart. And we'll get to him in a minute. Uh, but they they didn't coast on the defensive side. I mean, those guys in in the to the end at twenty seven nothing when the game was completely over. They were playing as if the Super Bowl was on the line. I like seeing that. I wanted to, you know, we've seen some let up from the defense late in some of these games. And again, I understand they're not playing a great, they're playing a terrible team in Arizona. I don't want to go overboard, but I, I, I thought it was extremely impressive the way they played kick-ass football to the end. Love seeing that. Great performance by the defense. Just, you know, there's, I got no negative points at all. What can I say? The Cardinals were completely inept offensively. Their quarterback, Clayton Toon, 11 of 20 for 58 yards, two picks. He fumbled. They made. They had one nice play in the first half where they gained like 30 yards and got called back on a bad penalty. Cardinals got screwed on that penalty. Wouldn't have mattered. They weren't doing anything with the ball anyway. Toon was also their leading. He was their leading passer with 58 yards. Their leading rusher with 28 yards. Their, their actual running backs, Keontae Ingram and Tony Jones Jr., had 10 yards on 12 carries. If you throw in Rondell Moore, carried it four times, you got you got. Uh, the 13 yards on 16 carries. Leading receiver Marquise Brown, four for 24. They had nothing. 675 total yards for Arizona in this game. 75. And um, so they had nothing. Defense was fantastic. Let's get to special teams now. Um. A rare miss for Dustin Hopkins. It didn't really matter. He made his first two kicks, missed the third one. That was odd. Corey Bjorquez, uh, I give him a mulligan for that. You know, you're going to miss him once in a while. Corey Bjorquez, the, the Browns punter, continues to be great. Had a 73-yard a punt that rolled down to the one-yard line. He's had a magnificent season. And it looks like the Browns may have finally found a punt returner. James Prochet, who they signed off, uh, they just signed to the practice squad this week. Uh, he looked very impressive. Guy's been with Baltimore the last three years. I, he had some really nice returns. He, in total, uh, six punt returns for 55 yards and um, with a long of 17. But he, and he had, there were two called back that cost him yardage, but he was, he was good. So they they've found somebody there. So special. So A-plus for the defense. I got to give an A to, to special teams, not an A-plus, because Hopkins did miss the one field goal. Otherwise, it would have been an A-plus for special teams as well. They covered um, they covered punts just fine. They had no, you know, uh, there weren't many. Covered kicks fine, no problem. Now, let's go to the offensive side of the ball. So, we were all antsy about Deshaun Watson playing today. And, you know, you didn't, frankly, we didn't know what to expect. And in the first half, I thought he looked pretty shaky. Uh, he did have one touchdown in the first half, but it was very lucky. 
It was a tipped ball that was floating up in the air, and Amari Cooper made a nice play on the ball. It certainly wasn't a good throw. Um, he Deshaun Watson had maybe one or two good throws in the first half, but there were plenty of bad ones. And so at halftime, you're like, okay, well, the Browns are up 13 to nothing. They're not going to lose this game. Arizona stinks. But still very nervous about Deshaun Watson. Well, I thought he played a whale of a game in the second half. Um, he's Listen, he's got a long, long way to go. I thought Adam Archuleta made some great points in the, uh, in the broadcast um, talking about the fact that, listen, he's barely played for now two and a half years. His mechanics are not great right now. He looks rusty. I, I, I don't want to – it's not about the shoulder. It, to me, it wasn't about the shoulder today. I thought he cut it loose just fine, especially in the second half. He made some some long throws. Some, I mean, that 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 long throw to Amari Cooper that set him up inside the 10 when uh, right before Kareem Hunt ran it in for the final touchdown, um, I, I thought that was – I mean, that was as good a pass as I've seen him make with the Browns. So uh, offensive line, even with the injuries, and we'll get to that in a second, uh, I thought the offensive line held up well. Watson took one sack. He did run a few times. Uh, three three carries for 22 yards in this one. But I thought Watson in the second half showed you some, you know, showed you some, not perfect, but but showed you a little of what he can do. And it was good to see. Now, can he do it again against Baltimore next week? Baltimore kicked the crap out of Seattle a couple of weeks after kicking the crap out of Detroit. Right now, Baltimore's the best team in the AFC. That, that you know, listen, that, that we're not we're not at the playoffs yet. There's two months to go, but at the ha- you know the halfway point of the season, Baltimore's the best team in the AFC. If you're watching all these games, there's no doubt. I know I believe they're tied with Kansas City for the best record, but no doubt Baltimore's played better than Kansas City. I mean, the last two good teams they played, they've Kill them. So we'll see. I'll be fascinated to see, but I think it was the right move for the Browns starting Watson because clearly he had a lot, a lot of rust to work through in the first half, and he looked like a much more confident and better player signaling these first downs. Um, he, he, you know, he was a different guy in the second half, and they needed that. Looked like he had some of his confidence, some of the swagger back, and that's what they're going to need. Because they're going to need a, uh, they're going to need a good game from Deshaun Watson to beat Baltimore. I'll tell you that. They're not going to shut out the Ravens. That was the Browns' first shutout in like 15 years. Very impressive. But in the end, Watson's numbers, 19 of 30, 219, two touchdowns, no picks. Again, it was far from perfect. Not going to not gonna come anywhere close to saying this was a great game. But he was careful with the ball for the most part. No turnovers for the Browns. They won the turnover battle, which is good to see because they haven't done it all in this year. They dominated that way. No turnovers by the offense. Uh, Deshaun played a serviceable first half and a good second half, in my opinion. Now, can he take that good second half where he seemed to be working off the rust? He seemed to be improving the mechanics. Um, Again, making some better throws, some good deep throws. Amari Cooper had a good game. Caught all five of his targets for 139 yards and a touchdown. Can he take that? against Baltimore next week because Baltimore's cooking. And if he can play well against Baltimore, well, then it, we're cooking too. In the running game, uh, it's funny. I, I, I love what – listen, they didn't run it particularly well. The running backs did not run the ball particularly well. None of them. If you take out the Sean Watson's 22 yards on three carries, the three running backs, Jerome Ford, Kareem Hunt, Pierre Strong, Had 37 carries for 91 yards. That's not even three yards a carry between those three guys. It's just over two and a half. So not good. Um, Yeah, Actually, yeah, about two and a half yards per carry. Not good, but they stuck with it. Even though it wasn't working particularly well, they ran the ball 40 times. They had 70 plays, 40 runs, 30 passes. Again, three by Watson, but uh, Ford was 20, had 20 carries for 44 yards. Uh, he had a nine-yard run, 
Kareem Hunt had a 10-yard run and a, and a nice play on the goal line. Not much else, 14-38. to 38. Pierre Strong, who looked great last week, was not involved. Uh, three carries for nine yards. Besides Amari Cooper, Jerome Ford had 33 yards on five catches. David Njoku, four for 26, and a touchdown. Elijah Moore, two for 14, had a play called back on a penalty. Jordan Akins had a catch. Cedric Tillman had his first catch, of, uh, not his first catch of the year, but he did he, one of our um, um, no fence riders questions on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show this week was would Cedric Tillman have a catch, and he did in the fourth quarter for three yards. So overall, the offense serviceable, defense fantastic. I'll, I'll give the offense a. Uh, C plus, A plus for the defense, an A for special teams, a C plus for the offense. It totals up to a a. Uh, I you know what I, I'm going to give the offense a B minus, a B minus. I got to go a little higher. Overall, I give the Browns uh, an A for their performance as they win twenty seven nothing again, taking care of a bad team, taking care of business. Browns now four and one at the stadium, five and three overall. With Baltimore winning and Pittsburgh winning on Thursday night, they keep pace with those teams. Cincinnati plays tonight against Buffalo. But uh, if the season ended right at this minute, the Browns would be the sixth seed in the AFC uh, at 5-3. and three. So they are a playoff team right now. And, uh, you know, they got. we know it's not going to be easy playing Baltimore and Pittsburgh the next two weeks. Browns are going to have to play better offensively and play, you know, again, we can't expect them to play to this level defensively every week because you're going to play much better teams. But uh, we, we got to see the good, the very good defense we've seen most weeks uh, for the for the Browns to play well. The defense still has to be the better unit. They still have to dominate for the Browns, you know, play really well for the Browns to win. But if we can get more of what we saw from Watson in the second half today, then the Browns will have a chance to start winning some games on offense, too. All right, uh, thanks to uh, Brian and and Max for producing, as always. Thanks to all of you for watching and listening. Make sure, if you're listening to this podcast, you click the subscribe button on the YouTube page. Click the bell. You'll get alerts every time I'm doing a podcast, every time I'm putting something out. Uh, Also, make sure to check me out on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, weekdays from 11 to 1 on YouTube and 1230 to one on channel three in Cleveland on Fridays. All right. That's going to do it for me today. Um, I'll talk to you next time. I thought I had something else I wanted to throw in there at the end, but no, I'm done. No, by the way, don't buy that fake report on the uh, Craig council going to the guardians. As of now, the guardians do not have a new manager yet, but hopefully something this week. All right. We'll talk to you next time. Where else? But right here, bullpen with Adam, the bull brought to you by that River. See you, everybody.